Hello and welcome to Recyclist. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and I'm very excited to welcome to the show right now a very special guest for today's episode, the Director of Federal Projects for Florida's Brevard and Volusia Counties, Sharon Tolson. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, for those who might not be familiar with what you do and your area of expertise, could you just kind of briefly explain it to us, please? All right. Our, the federal project that I directed was called the Florida Diagnostic and Learning Resource System. There are 19 centers in the state of Florida. There are four university centers. There are some specialized technology centers, all kinds of things that help people from birth to 21 and then on into adult years. So we did um, training. So I trained adults on how to work with people to get optimal performance. Uh, we had a child find division. We started kids very early who needed help, um, who had disabilities or some problem. Uh, the hospitals would call us the minute they were born if they were deaf or blind, and so we could work with them right away. So you want to get people to their optimal abilities. We had an assistive, adaptive, and instructional technology division. Uh, the first years, we had just an engineer because nobody knew how to adapt equipment, and eventually all of the technology people caught up with that, so we were able to have assistance in developing that. Uh, we also had a parent services component. So we were hosted by, uh, in Florida, the school boards gave us space, but our service area was hospitals, clinics, all kinds of folks who dealt with the population that needed assistance. And a big aspect of what you do is specifically, uh, just to kind of put it in, in layman's terms, brain health, essentially, correct? Exactly. And that was my specialty, was how does the brain and body work together, and how do you teach to that, or how do you train people, or how do you help them become um, able to do more things in their environment? And while some people may not immediately kind of make the correlation between what that means and how that initially relates to uh, you know, the, the world of waste, gas, and energy, landfills, wastewater plants, hospitals, and, and places of that nature, I think there's actually a, a much deeper corollary than a lot of people kind of expect, and I think it's really good that we're having this conversation, because I think there's a lot of things that people in these kind of domestically austere environments may not even think of. And in terms of landfills and wastewater plants specifically, and especially when it comes to brain health, right. I think there may be a lot of things that people might not even realize that are going on with them while they're working in places like these. Really, that's a really important problem. We have what we call the brain compatible environment, which is not really available today unless we really work hard at it as an individual. Our jobs make us be around all kinds of dangers with some kinds of equipment. Uh, remember before we had OSHA regulations and all that kind of stuff, people weren't wearing masks when they needed to. And the human body is not solid. All that waves and particles can go through the system and cause severe damage. Um, I have a degree in speech pathology and audiology and I ha saw a lot of hearing problems develop before we had ear protectors. And today we're seeing that coming back by people putting earbuds in their ears and turning it up to the pain threshold. 110 decibels is the pain threshold, and if you exceed that, you can kill someone. You know, people don't understand how delicate their ears are. I read a study the other day that they tested indigenous people and people that live in silent environments. The 90, 70 to 90 year old population had better hearing than our 20 year olds. So there's the sound environment that's a real problem. And think about people who work in sound. I used to test people with hearing that shot guns and played in bands. I could just draw their hearing loss. So that's really important. There's so many things. There's so many chemicals out there. Um, I went to a cortex workshop on the brain about chemicals. And they said there were 500 chemicals that are banned in other countries that we still use that haven't been adjusted or, or banned, and people might use them every day on their lawn without thinking how, and I'm not wearing a mask, and how does that help my growth in my brain? Honestly, when it comes to the sound thing, that's something that, I mean, we're, I, I was focused more on talking about like the gases and everything, yeah, but, yeah. But, the, but the sound component I think is a really great point because in a lot of these places there's so much construction and there is so much noise pollution going on. I didn't even consider that coming into this interview. Yeah, that's huge. It's very, very basic. 
interesting if you ask some if I would ask you to sing a tone mm -hmm. what you sing to me most Americans is usually the tone of the electrical current that's circulating in the building because it's subliminal that you hear it you can't shut your ears off ever but if you do it in Europe they have a different system so you get a different tone all, really? think about all that affects you all the time you can't shut your ears off I think about uh, the shuttles and the different things that were going off, and they would be so noisy, my house would rattle, and then the sonic boom would make my whole neurological system fire. And we don't want that. <laughs> we want a calmer neurological system that's ready to perform when it needs to. It's incredible the speed of the neurological system and what it takes to focus. Focusing is very difficult. So think about in your job when you just lose your attention for a minute, accidents can happen. Um, my father worked for the gas company, and that's how I know about all the gas problems that people can run into. And he had heliarch welders who would weld on live pipes because you can't shut them off. I mean, that's a dangerous occupation. And they had to be very careful with the equipment they used, protection that they had. And I mean, sp speaking of protection, Diamond Scientific sells, you know, all, most of our devices uh, are... Uh, used for like safety compliance and making sure that you know gas levels, methane levels, hydrogen sulfide, and and the like are in uh, within acceptable levels. And speaking of Diamond Scientific, I should also say that we are blessed to also be joined by Diamond Scientific CEO Ramon Rivera uh, for this interview. But um, I, I think for a lot of the people working at these landfills, wastewater plants, and again other places, they're they're of the mindset that. You know, it's like, well, yes, I'm around methane, I'm around hydrogen sulfide, I'm around these toxic gases all the time. But, you know, as long as I'm only out there for a little while, as long as I don't pass out from the gases, I'll be fine. And I think that they that might be a dangerous perspective to go with because a lot of your research and a lot of the, the effects that you've looked into and that you've uh, come across over the years has to do with, you know, kind of mild exposure over a very ex uh, extended Exactly. Uh, extended time. Yeah, that makes a big difference. Uh, we find, like with painters that worked for places that I had worked, they didn't wear their protective equipment, and we saw a lot of strokes, a lot of brain damage later on. Just like the football players who keep hitting their head, and you know, all those things affect the brain. And especially younger people whose brains are still developing, they're not all re wired completely until 30 for some people. So think about those folks hit more of the problems early on. I also see uh, different things that we can do in those kind of environments to help ourselves. So in my workshops on optimal performance that we did, we thought about, well, what do you need to do to keep your immune system fighting that. Your equipment helps, but you've got to use it the right way. And some of the equipment in some, not your profession probably, but in others are not quite adequate to protect, as we've seen over the years. And I worked with a lot of stroke patients over the years who were caused from a lot of those problems. Uh, for instance, you need to have the appropriate amount of water every day. So there's a formula. You take your body weight, divide it by half, and that tells you how many ounces are your baseline. Now, if you work outside and you sweat and you exercise and you work on technology equipment that drains you, you must drink more. But eight glasses a day for everybody is not right. It's what do you personally need. Now, you can overdo it, too, by following eight glasses a day. You know, if you're a person that weighs 100 pounds, that's a little bit too much for you. Um, water also helps the neurological system sends signals all over the body. The brain is, a lot of the brain is water. A lot of the body is water. So if you're working in places that dehydrate you, as you might be with all that equipment on, you need to- In to a landfill in Florida? <laughs> no. no, I just walking outside <laughs> might be a problem. Um, the food you eat matters. Um, and uh, what you eat matters the most, but think about your gut health. That's what helps you digest if you eat well, but you don't digest well. And we see a lot of people today with leaky guts, with the sad American diet. It happens. And so you have to look at all of those things to keep you healthy or the rest of your system, like your immune system, does not perform. Um, you need movement. 
everything is about movement. That's how we learn, by moving and by watching people and actually doing things. We only remember 20% of what we read. We remember 90% of what we actually do and 100% of what we know to teach to other people. So if you're trying to learn something new or you're doing a workshop for your people, you need to think about all those things. Are they actually picking this up? So uh, sleep is enormously important. Um, in the book I have called Office Biology, we found out that shift work could take 10 to 15 years off of people's lives because we have 100 circadian clock rhythms approximately within our body and we've ruined the day-night cycle which is the major one. For us lay people like me who don't necessarily understand what a circadian clock rhythm is. Oh, okay. So it's your day-night cycle. Mm -hmm. And all of your organs have a certain cycle when they release chemicals. So cortisol is released at different times or melatonin for sleep. Well, now we've interrupted all those cycles if we have shift work. The worst is if it's multiple shift changes. The, the very late shift is a real problem for people because we really screwed up their ability. And, of course, you can watch TV 24 hours a day now, and that sometimes ruins people's ability to, to sleep well. <laughs> but that's so important. The other thing, um, uh, uh, oxygen, of course, you need absolutely need oxygen. What if your environment is so damaged? That, well, think about all those places that had poor water, poor air quality, uh, cancer centers that we find around the country, even in our own backyard. Here we have several. So there's all these things to think about. Um, the other thing is attitude and emotion. It's very important. Emotion rules the brain. And you have to then really work hard to think. So if I get upset, I get stressed, my body gets stressed, it ruins my whole ability to perform. So I need to be able to stop and think for a minute, but that takes training, you know, and a lot of people don't get the training that they need early on. So that's why we were around to try to help kids and adults learn these types of things so they can help themselves. I'm really interested to know, obviously, you know, these are a lot of great tips, and I definitely want to circle back to them. Uh, when it comes to, uh, I'm just still kind of fascinated about this, this idea of sound pollution and, and noise and how that can even have negative long-term effects. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hate to kind of put you on the spot here, but even outside of gases and that, when it comes to industrial environments, like many of the people listening to this show are going to work in, are there any other things that you can maybe think of that that they may not even consider as potentially long-term damaging? Well, heavy metals, of course, are a big problem if it's in your environment. Um, think about the asbestos that was around for years. All of those things, How? what is my building made out of? I've been in a lot of buildings that are sick buildings. Um, we had where rain would come in and go in between the walls and cause the mold. So all those things in my environment that I'm working in, I need to know about. Um, for example, as an administrator, and I worked in a, uh, had a school system office, we had to go through all the chemicals every year that were around us or in our offices, learn about the problems with them, and see that people stayed away from them or wore the protective equipment. So that's a requirement, and I'm sure it's a requirement in most industries. But we would find people would not remember or do things unless they thought about this is really damaging my brain or my body. So that was another thing we added. But I did a supplement on sound environment and the health and sound environments. And I'd be glad to leave a copy with you guys. But it's important to understand what's happening to you in this system. And I think, you know, of, of all the things that you talked about, these, you know, mitigating steps that you can take to kind of protect yourself against stuff, I, I think it's important to let the listeners know that, fortunately, the brain is not like tooth enamel. It's not just something that you have that can only degrade and uh -huh. then you never get. It's something you can actually build back up. Right. It is a muscle that you can strengthen, and even if you've suffered some of this, these long-term negative effects, it's not just something where, well, now I just live with that. Now, no, you can actually do something about this. Exactly. A lot of the things that you're talking about are not just ways to stop uh, brain degradation, but actually build it back up, correct? Right. When I worked in a clinic and I worked with stroke patients, we had cognitive therapies that we could do to recreate new pathways in the brain. 
And so like think about playing a musical instrument. If you do that, you add a whole section of things and connections in your brain that you never thought you had. But it's important because those pathways help you. There are more possible neural connections in a human brain than the number of atoms in the known universe. So think about potential. We have eight types of intelligence. We have four learning styles. We have a right-left brain processing system. But we can change it. Every day, everything you do changes your brain. So you want it to always be positive. So every movement I make changes the wiring. Now, the other thing that's important for food with wiring is that the nerves myelinate, which means they get a coating around them. It's like an electrical cord. Then the neurons shoot better through that so you think faster, and it makes connections. It, what causes the myelin to form is eating the appropriate fats in your diet. It's built from fat. But it has to be the right fat and not the bad fat. So that's how important diet is to brain development. Now, I would use therapies. I had a one-stroke patient that was very interesting. He had a tiny insult from a brain injury. And he had what we call global aphasia, trouble speaking, understanding, whatever. That little incident was in a big nexus of the neurons. And he, couldn't re he did not come along like we thought, but he did okay with some things. I had another person who had a, a lot of brain damage on the left side of the brain, just huge, and we're thinking, wow, what's gonna happen here? Amazingly, in working with these people, the whole right brain took over every function and he was fine. Now that's a miracle, we think, but it's the brain is so plastic and so ability to adapt is amazing. Now we have famous cases uh, where one man could never remember anything from the day before. No memory at all. So every day they had to tell him what happened, reintroduce him to his wife, all that stuff. Now, of course, he had to be in an institution. But think about what goes on and could happen to your brain if you damage it too much. Here's another example I thought was exciting. Um, I had read some research on people. Remember when we used to put them all in institutions, and we thought they were crazy. So we didn't have nutrition testing at that point far and wide. So we had a couple of cases that I remember. One man was allergic to corn and didn't know it. He ate cornflakes every day of his life. He was in an institution because they thought he was mentally insane. He stopped eating corn, he was just fine. Another guy was affected by carbon dioxide from cars and he drove to work in a big city every day. We had him move to the country and he was just fine. I mean, there's simple things, but if you don't know that, that how important your nutrition is, and if you're allergic to stuff, it's usually the thing you want. <laughs> so it's important that you know that. Yeah, well, I'm sure there's a lot of simple things that many of the people that listen to this podcast could do. A lot of people working in, not even just, you know, landfills, wastewater plants, and other kind of, uh, again, domestically austere environments, but any type of industrial application. Uh, I don't know if there's kind of a, a one-size-fits-all, but... Uh, you know, you talk about simple things. I'm sure a lot of the people listening to this are aware. Yeah, you might want to wear a mask if you're around a lot of noxious gases. Yes, you should probably go out of your way to avoid traumatic brain injury. But specifically for these types of environments, uh, I mean, you've talked about diet, you've talked about sleep, you've talked about other things. Are there any kind of like industrial centric things that uh, people may want to start doing, adding into their daily schedule to to kind of help with the things that they're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis? Sure. Uh, uh, probably one of the biggest things is be sure to do a lot of movement. If we sit too long, in, in fact, the chair, the design of the chair is the worst possible position for the human body. Uh, stools or some place where your legs go down so that the blood circulates, um, working in front of a, a if they do technology at all, they need. there's an ecology chart that we looked at today that here's what you do if you have to work in front of that equipment, which hurts your eyes, which then affects the brain. Um, texting can cause, you know, uh, paralyzed thumbs. I had some kids that had that. It, it, and the tech neck that people get. So they want to be sure with whatever equipment you're working on, you keep movement. There's a rule. Um, there's no chair that you sit in right now that you have, but those lounge chairs, if they fit you, I can't find one because I'm sure that fits me, but uh, they are okay, but there's a 10-minute rule for your muscles. You need to move your muscles about every 10 minutes. 
So if you're sitting a lot, take breaks. Your brain will work a lot better if you do that. Um, we taught the yoga people some brain gym activities that you can do even if you sit at a desk or you need to move a lot. And there's cross-crawling movements that you can do easily at your chair, at your desk. Um, we do a, with your eyes, if you want the six muscles in your eyes to move more, you take your thumb and you make a, an infinity sign and you follow that, but you don't move your head and you go up and down, you've got to take your glasses off so that the muscles actually move if for eye strain. Uh, there's a whole wonderful book called Office Biology that has a lot of stuff in there, too, about if you find your equipment is not working for you, think about how you could adjust that to your system. But it's being sure you take enough rest, you drink the water, and you can't Focus is really important, so think about losing focus, and that could cause accidents. So the attention span is very short. Um, when children develop attention, they get about one minute for every year they're old. And that's about it. And you don't get better than seven. So you get seven minutes of focused attention if you're good at it. People that are gurus and work hard, you know, to get better attention might get 10 minutes at the most. But your brain is always monitoring for danger, for systems. People talk to you, you turn your head. It's, you can't stop that. But what you can do is some exercise and take, I, the breaks are so important. 32 to 45 minutes of focused work with a quick, maybe 10 minute break helps you function better during the day. So think about working with equipment that could damage you or cut you, <laughs> you know. For, that's what we find in accidents in hospitals a lot, is people lost focus working with a machine that could cut a finger off or whatever. And that's a really, when I worked in hospitals, that's a lot we would see. Those accidents were caused by lack of attention. Specifically when it comes to long-term exposure to gases, again, methane, hydrogen sulfide, and stuff like that, it, <laughs> may be a little difficult to implement so many life changes right. like kind of right off the bat but if you were going to say if you're working in these types of environments if you're working in these industries and you're worried about the long-term effects of these gases on your body what is one or two big things that i may be able to do to start mitigating those long-term effects okay depending on what type of things you're exposed to i would make sure that every year you you let your doctor know what you're exposed to so they can test for those kinds of things to see if changes are happening. Um, if you notice a big change in your system, be sure to seek medical advice or, you know, some therapy that might help you overcome that kind of thing or talk with somebody or buy one of the books, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. I mean, they're excellent to give you information and have a nice reference as those things happen. I also would check whatever chemical you're exposed to, try to do some research on what are the things that could happen so that you say, okay, I'm not going to do that because I know that will happen and I have some equipment that might help me avoid that. But that's the best thing. It's just like when I worked in the school system office, when I had to know all the chemicals there, it had all of the problems with those chemicals. So if I knew that and I knew my people were exposed to it, I could get them help if they needed it. Or there might be some medication that's needed. I think we avoid getting all those things checked with our physicians because we think, well, it probably won't bother me that much. Well, it does. So it's important that you know what chemicals you have and what problems they could cause. Uh, well, great, Sharon. I think you've given us a lot of stuff. I know you've already given me a lot of stuff to, to think about, and I'm already thinking about some of the things that I'm going to start doing <laughs> when I get back to the <laughs> office already. But again, thank you so much for showing up for Recyclist and, and giving us your expertise. Uh, what were those books, again, that you were talking about? Well, I have several that I like a lot. One's called Office Biology. It's an older book, but it has wonderful information in it. Um, there's a book called The Chair. It's very interesting. It's about ergonomics and what your office equipment should be like if you really care about human bodies. Um, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life by Dr. Amen is wonderful. You'll see him on PBS a lot. He comes on. And Dr. Stephen Grundy, I got a new book from him called Gut Check. So if you're worried about your leaky gut or... See, the, there's a second brain there that rules 
the gut rules your brain, really. It can give you brain fog if you don't treat it right. But those are some, just some books that I know are fairly available. Change Your Brain, Change Your Life, I find in bookstores all the time. He's written a bunch of other books that would be helpful, too. Great. Well, that's certainly a ton of brain food for thought. Uh, but once again, thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of Recyclist. Once again, brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamond, S-C-I.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Thank you so much for joining us today.